Hey guys, today I wanted to talk a little bit about some of these kind of ideas behind why religions develop. Um, sociologists and psychologists for all of history have kind of been trying to figure out what it is about humanity that makes us super, or that makes us lean toward the spiritual, right? Almost every culture in every society in all parts of the world for all of time have always had some sort of supernatural beliefs, whether it is a fully formed religion um, like Christianity or Hinduism, or whether it's just a belief in the spiritual or supernatural, um, they've always existed. So why is that, right? Uh, especially at the turn of the 20th century and starting in the 1900s, uh, people really started to dig into this a little bit more and try to come up with some reasons. And one of the things that's kind of interesting about it is if you look at the time when these when these philosophies or um, theories develop, they actually match with the history of the time of that time as well. Um, so just kind of something to think about. Um, but I want to break them down here really quickly. So the first idea is the materialist theories. So materialist writers um, mostly come around at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, end of the 1800s. Uh, so this picture right here, you might recognize this guy if you've taken um, any sort of advanced history classes. That is Karl Marx. Um, so this is an idea that's pushed by Marx and some other people of his era. And what these writers believe is that religion is man-made, right? That's what we mean by materialist. It is a material created by man. Um, and that because it is man-made, it's actually something that's used to control other people. Right. Uh, so this kind of connects into with the theories of communism and class structure, way more complicated than what we're going to get into. Um, so just kind of the basics of what materialist thinkers here are saying. So Marx did not like religion at all. He called it the opiate of the masses. So if you've ever had surgery or, you know, gotten your wisdom teeth out or something, usually what drug you're going to get during surgery and the aftermath is an opiate. Right. And opiates sort of cloud your mind, right? Like you see those funny videos online of people who've just had their wisdom teeth out saying like really silly things because they can't really control themselves. They're not really sure what's going on. They're not really thinking. Marx's religion is that same, has that same sort of effect on people, right? And the upper classes use religion in order to kind of keep poverty at its level, to keep poor people in their place, um, to sort of keep that inequality structure and keep them from rebelling. A great example of this idea that he used is the American South. So during slavery, the kind of messages that were taught to slaves is that, yes, you may be in bondage now, but when you die and go to heaven, you'll be free. So you don't have to try to free yourselves now. One day you'll be free in heaven, right? So you can see kind of how that's using religion to keep slaves in their place. Um, Sigmund Freud, another thinker of this time period, says that religion is something we've created to make us feel better about ourselves. Freud was all about relationships, all about kind of human desire. And basically what he says is we use religion as a replacement for relationships we don't have. Um, so if we're not having fulfilling relationships with a man or a woman um, or family members or a loved one, we turn to God, right? God has a relationship with me, so I don't have to worry about my relationship with other humans. Um, it's kind of this idea that religious people are sort of indulging in their own illusions, their own deceptions, um, maybe even in their own guilt. Um, Freud was kind of obsessed with like the idea of right and wrong. And it was sort of a way for him to say, we're obsessed with our sins, right? And we want to talk about them. And we kind of have this like urge to think about them and um, pursue them, even though we know it's wrong, right? Uh, so these writers are, just as a summary, materialist writers don't believe, typically we're looking at atheists here, right? They don't believe that religions are actually supernatural, but are something that we have, as humans, have created in order to control other people, to control ourselves, to make ourselves feel better, all that kind of good stuff, right? Um, a little bit later in um, the century, people started to shift views a little bit and started to think about religion as a functionalist theory. So functionalism kind of means how is religion useful to us, 
right? What does it provide for us from a biological standpoint, right? Is it evolutionary? Um, does it serve a useful purpose in um, society and biology to kind of keep us together? Uh, so uh, some examples of this, uh, in the early 90s, a man, a theologian named John Bowker wrote a book against Richard Dawkins. So Richard Dawkins, you may know, is a scientist. Um, he is an atheist, and he wrote about how what he said is God is a virus. He said God has infected humanity, and we are not good because of it, right? Well, Bowker wrote this book in response to that, where he says, actually, it's not that bad, right? God is not a virus that is harming humanity, but in fact, religion has brought humanity together. Um, specifically, he talks about the biological benefits for humanity, right? So if you think about it, if you are part of a religious community, okay, oftentimes those religions teach us, you know, like, what is marriage? We should be fruitful and multiply, have children, right? Um, it helps us create a world in which we nurture our children. So basically, religion helps us reproduce. Um, it gives us, you know, lessons and how to be better people and how to raise children and how to, you know, find a mate and all of that good stuff, even going back to kind of our primal instincts. Uh, there is also another theory out there that is called the God gene theory. This theory from biologists kind of says that there is a gene that some people have that is inclined to make them more spiritual. Um, so that spirituality can actually be passed down through generations. So what he says here is that people who have this gene are more likely to have religious experiences. Um, if you hear someone say like, oh, I felt the Holy Spirit move in me. Um, or if you look at history and you see people who have had these like visions, think of like Joan of Arc. Maybe these people had this specific gene that scientists have discovered. Not everybody has this gene. Um, and a lot of times they'll have found that like people who don't have this gene are not particularly religious or spiritual. Uh, so it's just kind of an interesting biological theory. Uh, again, this is a theory. This is not proven science. Uh, just kind of an idea of the, what is the function of it, right? Another fun function um, that some behavioral psychologists have discovered um, is at Duke have found that people who are religious tend to have what they call a better life satisfaction. Basically, that just means people who are religious are happier. Um, they found that people who are religious have better mental health. Um, they tend to handle trauma easier. Um, so if you've ever heard a person who has gone through a very traumatic experience say, you know, it's all in God's plan and things will work out the way they're supposed to, that's uh, that's a biological benefit, right? That's kind of the thing that we want to think. Um, some people who are religious even have better physical health. Uh, a lot of religions ban, you know, things like smoking and drinking. Re religious people tend to um, be not drinkers or smokers, or at least not to that extreme extent. Um, some religions like Judaism have very specific food regiments, food laws, foods that they can and can't eat. Often that leads to a healthier diet. Uh, and so these are all things that religion has given people to actually help them survive in the world a little bit easier. Um, so these are all functions that religions serve, whether it's, you know, biological reproduction, um, you know, making us happier and healthier, all of these sort of scientific ideas um, of religion. Last but not least, the last theory I want to look at is this idea of will there always be religion, okay? And some people don't think so, and that goes into what we call the magic theory of religion. So this last theory says that humans created religion or lean towards religion in order to explain the world that they lived in, right? So if you think about, you know, ancient um, scientists or ancient people, who had never seen the universe. They don't understand the seasons and why the stars move across the sky. So they come up with stories to help explain it. The gods created this or the gods make this happen because they don't need religion anymore or they don't, they don't need science, right? The religion, the magic of religion helps explain the world around them. 
right? It's not just, you know, because the earth is revolving, well, God must make that happen. But over the centuries and millennia, we have, you know, used science to make discoveries. We don't need religion to explain everything, right? We know why we have seasons. We don't need to believe that the goddess Demeter causes the seasons to change. Uh, and so some people believe that eventually the more scientific we become, the less religious we'll be. And if you look at world history, there is kind of a correlation between the increase of science and the decrease of religion, right? Um, and so these people who believe in the magic theory say that, you know, eventually in 100, 200, 500, 1,000 years from now, humanity might not even need religion anymore. Science might become our religion. Um, so it's an interesting thought, especially when you think about it in comparison to some of these other ideas about religion, right? Uh, so these are just three of many, many, many theories that we will explore, um, but just some of the basics, right? So I want you to kind of think about these different theories of religion. Do they make sense to you? Does it make sense that religion offers just a way to explain the world, or is there more to it than that? Does it, you know, make sense to you that religion is man-made in order to control people? Or, you know, does it provide those people comfort in a world where things are tough, right? So just kind of think about these concepts and ideas. I'm not saying that any of them are true or any of them, one is more true than the other, and they may not any be true. But they're just ideas to help us sort of think about why religions exist for humanity. Um, so we'll continue to talk about this more in class. Until then, y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.